All right, it's time to rock and roll. Let's do this show. You're in the Taking Automation to Task. I'm Stephen Judd. Go to the next slide, please. Supposed to push this button, and there we go. Who am I? I just told you who I am. I'm Stephen Judd. I'm a multi-year, multi-discipline IT pro. I've done all kinds of IT in my life. The only thing I'm really weak on still to this day is data. So don't ask me about data, but you can ask me about all kinds of other stuff. I am a PowerShell enthusiast. In case no one has figured it out by now, I'm a PowerShell enthusiast. Uh, you also probably know by now I'm a dad joke enthusiast. But what you might not know about me is that I'm a fashion icon. <laughs> okay, maybe not, whatever, all right. Let's get rolling. So we're gonna talk about the task scheduler, and specifically the task scheduler in Windows. No surprise there. So I hope you stick around after hearing this. I mean, you came in here, this is what we're gonna talk about. Uh, if not, be cron, you haters. Yep, that took a minute. Task scheduler is not cross-platform. So, you, you know, that's just the way it is. So therefore, we'll be using Windows PowerShell. Well, sorta, because it does work with PowerShell 7. Same commands, modules, it all works. But you still have to run it on Windows. Okay, note, we will not be discussing cluster tasks for Windows clusters. That's just out of scope. All right, so our focus are the PowerShell commandlets from the scheduled task module, right? It's version 1.0.0.0, forever known here now as V1, okay? Updates, nope. Bug fixes, nope. Security issues fixed, probably, but how do we know? It's still version one. There haven't been any security fixes since 1.0.0.0? Yeah, whatever, okay. So, who uses the scheduled tasks? If you run get scheduled tasks, you can see what scheduled tasks are running on your machines. And you're like, well, this is only the ones that I've put on there, right? Yeah. Also, the object that you get back from get scheduled tasks is interesting. We're gonna look at that. And not all tasks are returned. Yay, helpful. Well nor are they if you use scheduled tasks executable. Yay, helpful. But they are visible in the UI. So you can see them in the UI, but you can't see them using the tools. We're gonna look at that. Okay, to the prompt. <laughs> Let's take a look. Where's my stuff? All right, so. Uh, I tried to make it big, all the way at the back. If I go too much bigger, it, it all turns into alphabet soup. So uh, here we're gonna run this from ISC because the VS Code, as you can see up here at the top, is running as administrator. All right, so I'm gonna hit run here. I'm gonna F5 and boom, here it comes. Come on, PowerShell ISC, load up. I, we're, we're ba I basically use that as a cheat to get me over here. I'm gonna make this bigger because this needs to be a little bigger. Zoom to there, no. Zoom to there. All right, is that good enough in the back? We good? All right, sweet. All right, so let's run get scheduled task. I'm just gonna F8 that line, taking my fate into my own hands. And you saw all those, I mean, there was a bunch of them just went scooting by there. So I'm gonna do a little scroll just so you can get the gist. Yeah, there's a bunch of them. Almost all of them are in Microsoft. So this is how Windows keeps itself healthy. All right, well, let's look at the ones that are, do not match Microsoft. Now, I use a lot of regex. This is where I'm gonna give you a pro tip. If you're not good at regex, stop using like. Use match and not match. Match and not match, use regex, and it will force you to kind of just get used to using regex. Okay, and there's no cost, it's free. So here's my list, slightly different list. Ooh, I just realized I've got demo tasks that's gonna blow up my demo later because I didn't run something. So I'm gonna fix that here in a sec. All right, so task, task path, task name, there you go, that's it. Now, I told you, you can't see everything, right? There's some in here that show up because this is running as administrator. I just realized I ran this 
from an administrator of VS Code, so it didn't work. Eh, joke's on me. Let's try this again then. We'll do this, we'll do this quote unquote normally. All right, non-administrative shell. Make the font, font, oh yeah, control drag. Oops, I went the wrong way. There we go. Do you know you hold down control and then do your scroll wheel and it makes it bigger and smaller? Pro tip, there you go. Get scheduled task. I should have copied it from the other window. Not right, host. <laughs> Did I not select the text? I didn't select the text. Home, shift, end. Control C, Alt Tab, sweat some more because I messed up. Paste, go. There we go. All right, notice how many Microsoft Edge ones there are on that, that list there, okay? Two, you know, two OneDrive ones. But in the other list that was running as administrator that I screwed up, whatever, ask for your forgiveness. There's more. Now why? Why is that? Welcome to the UAC. It's not nearly as cool as the EAC, right, Crush? You already read my joke. But of course, you could try to do something ugly. So let's do something ugly. Let's do new object, com object, schedule, service, et cetera, get connect, blah, blah, blah. Or you, know, you could do schedule tasks. But it won't work either because of the UAC. So the command lines honor the UAC, but the UI does not. UI will allow you to see all the tasks, but you can't adjust the ones that you are an administrator for. So watch out for that. All right, we're done here. We're done with that. And I need to do this right quick before my demos blow up. I need to run number nine. Why is this running? Stop. Run number nine. See, I even wrote clean up so it all cleans up all my stuff. Hopefully this doesn't blow up on me. Go. Yep. Sweet. All right, back to this. All right, I, I told you the object was weird, so I'm gonna start from here. Let me get rid of this file thing here. All right, so top, 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 check for admin rights. Here's a nice little block of code that you can put in your stuff. It'll check for admin. So then if, it does, if you're not admin, it says, hey, you must be running as admin. So I'm gonna hit run, F5, and I got my scheduled tasks. I also like to put wait debugger, at least in my demos, so that I don't have to make sure, hey, did I hit F9, did I not? All right, that's what I'm doing there. So I'm gonna step through this. Let's take a look at the get type for this object. There it is, Microsoft Management Infrastructure Sin Instance. Okay, that's interesting, it's a sin instance. Why isn't it its own object? I don't know, I didn't write it. Let's see what uh, the next line is. All right, well here's the full type name that you got from get member. Microsoft Management Infrastructure Sin Instance, pound, root, Microsoft, Windows, task scheduler, MSFT underscore scheduled task. That's your object that you're working from, okay? And it's fun because it doesn't necessarily have all the things you think it has. We're gonna look at that in another demo. All right, am I done with this one? Uh, write host, what does write host tell me? Return to the slides. Return to the slides. Let's see if this plays again. Or is it gonna go to the next one? Who, you, yeah, see, that's the, we don't wanna hear that again. We're gonna go to the next one, foreshadowing. Next slide, please. Did it go back to the same one? Yes, it did, all right, moving on. Skip it, ah, here we go, all right. Creating a scheduled task, that's where I wanted to be. Let's create some scheduled tasks, because scheduled tasks are fun, we want to create some. This is where things really start to get interesting. Similar to using the new AZVM commandlet on the AZ module, you have to build your object using other commandlets. And so you build them, build them, build them, and then you pass them, and you do it. Okay, so again, to the code. All right, that's the last time, I promise. I promise. Not trying to annoy you guys to death. All right, that's a little preview of that. Oh wait, if I do, I just said, if I did alt tab, it's not gonna do what I want it to do. So I must do out and then tab over to my stuff. Yep, here we go. Create, create code. 
So this very first one, let me close this out so we get the room to see it. The very first one was taken directly from the help, directly from help example one. However, I changed principle from dollar principle equals contoso slash administrator because it doesn't work. Even if you put your domain and your user account in there, that doesn't work. I also added a task path for the demo so that my stuff was like contained into a particular path. So it's, it's nice and neat. But you see what I had to do here? I had to say new scheduled task principle. That's not in the docs. It's not in the help files, okay? And remember we're on version one? But I don't know if we update the help. But I think we can still update the help even though the code's not done. We'll find out when we go to the docathon, right? All right, so let's run this. Boom, here we go. I just created that task. There's your output. Awesome, okay? Uh, another wait debugger there to say do this, all right? Let's go to the next part. Let's look at this one, because this one's a little more interesting. Mm, close that so we can get the full thing. Now I'm doing splatting. I'm saying, okay, here's my new scheduled task action parameter. Execute PowerShell. Here's my arguments. I'm passing them. Here's a clever little thing you can do. You can put them in an array and then do join on space. And it'll combine them all together. So you can take all your stuff, make it nice and readable. Cool, huh? Another splat. Now notice this one, it's running daily at midnight. Cool. That's it. So I did a daily at midnight task. Nothing exciting there. What's next? Let's do another scheduled task. This time it's gonna run once at midnight and it's gonna repeat on my repetition interval every five minutes. So when this one got created, it scheduled the thing, I have a repetition interval, I'm now gonna point you to this. Repetition duration may not be what you think it is. I thought it was, how long is this task gonna run? And what does it do at the end? That's sort of the thing, but if I said schedule it for to running today and I say end by tomorrow, then that scheduled task will run and then tomorrow it won't ever trigger again. This repetition duration is how long will it run? Because I have this commented out, it'll run forever, okay? So this will run forever, every five minutes, starting at midnight. If I created it today, it'd start today. That's it. All right, what's the next one? This is so exciting, all these scheduled tasks. But I wanted to point something out here. We're gonna create this scheduled task. This one runs every five minutes, starts at midnight, has a repetition interval, but on this one, I gave it an execution time limit. Execution time limit says, you can start the task, but what if your task hangs? Okay, what's it gonna do? Well, it's gonna run until it hits the execution time limit. The default execution time limit is three days. Three days, very exciting. Thank you for that. So what I'm doing here is I'm taking the repetition interval and I'm subtracting a one minute time span. So it's gonna run every four minutes, every five minutes, but at four minutes, if it's still running, I want you to kill it. Anyone notice the name of this file? Chad.ps1. Chad goes into an infinite loop and never finishes. So that's my hanging Chad. You're welcome. All right. And now it says return to the slides. So let's go back to the slides. Shift F5. I'd like to talk through what I'm doing. Let's see if it took me any. What, so what's missing? When you're creating tasks this way, you cannot create monthly triggers. Do you need a monthly trigger? You might. You can't do it here. Thanks. Daily trigger repetition. You're like, wait, I saw repetition? Yeah, the flag was once, not daily. So a lot of people create daily tasks and they say, I want you to run every day. I want you to start at eight o'clock in the morning and I want you to run every hour until eight o'clock at night because that covers our business window. Yeah, you can't do that through here. Event trigger options like execution time limit. Wait, I saw execution time limit. What are you talking about? Yeah, execution time limit I showed you was for the entire scheduled task, not for the triggers. Can't do it from here. Thanks, and more foreshadowing. Uh, if you wanna see more about what is actually possible through the command line, because the command line does cover all this stuff. 
versus what scheduled test does. So what you may have to do for yours is to not do PowerShell. You may need to run scheduled tasks exe commands. All right. Where's my next? Do the next one. Go. Did I click away? There we go. So here's my recommendation. My recommendation is use the one time or the once, because that's the flag once, trigger type with parameters repetition interval and repetition duration, but don't set repetition duration. I'm, I put it on here, but unless you're needing to use it, like you need this task to stop at the end of this year, don't use that and just set them up for infinite and then don't set up multiple triggers per task. But your situation may require that, so okay. So now that we're now that we're like a task master, we want to enable the task history. Okay, the task history is disabled by default. Thank you. So on a standard Windows machine, server, and client, there's no history on any of your tasks unless you've turned it on. Don't know why. That's the deal. So I recommend using GPO or any configuration management tool to enforce the task history is set to be enabled. Uh, and then use the event viewer to see the status of your tasks, but you have to have it enabled, okay? Finally, this is where those events go. It's in the Microsoft Windows Task Scheduler slash operational. And I think, yeah, one more thing. Uh, I recommend also that you increase the size. Tasks are noisy. They like to chit chat into your event log. So if you go with the default of 10 megabytes, you're gonna fill that up and you may not get your history. Okay, there we go. I'm trying to think that I'm supposed to do a demo here, but I'm gonna move ahead because, may I see some ID please? Right, ID 107, the task got triggered. 129, create task process. I mean, this isn't very exciting to look at, but you need to know that 129 has the process ID. So if something's hung, you can go to the 129s and you can get the process ID that you can then do PS ID this pipe kill because you're gonna type it in the command line. If you're gonna do that, you, you don't need to do full command list. But if you wanna do full command list, so yes, it's get process dash ID, et cetera, okay? 100, the task started. Can someone explain to me why task started is a lower number than task triggered? Whatever, I didn't write this. How about the action started? Well, now we're into the 200s. So not only did it trigger and then it started, now it's really started, right? I mean, I'm serious about started now. You can tell, because it has two. And then the action completed, and then the task completed. All right. I'm wishing I, had my like slides here because I didn't, I obviously, I feel like I should be showing demos, but I'm gonna get back into the tap. I'm gonna keep going on this because I'm just, I'm sweating bullets now. Hey Job, are you okay? I see you still have your wife and three friends. I may have mispronounced Job though. Does anyone get that joke? So here are the wife and three friends for the jobs for when things go poorly. So it's launch request ignored, launch request queued, Stop task stopping due to timeout and launch condition not met. So if you are running tasks that you need to know whether they were successfully running or not, these are the events that you need to pay attention to. And then you'll know what the status of your tasks are. And if you want to get the documentation on this, good luck because 2008 R2 is the only documentation I could find on these task numbers. Thanks. All right, so where's the current documentation? I have no idea. All right, I am now going to step out of the slides because I am sure that I've missed something. Let's see. So we created the task, and now we're gonna look at the history. Okay, so I'm just gonna talk through this instead of run this code, but I want you to see it. So you can use this command here to enable, no, no text, to enable the task history. But we're PowerShell people. We don't like to type exe commands. No, that's dumb. So we're PowerShell people, so we do it this way. We specify the log name and we create a new object and then we set it to is enabled and we save the changes. 
Ta-da, that's it, that's great. But hey, even better, even better. We're gonna take an encoded command, we're gonna take that exact bit of code and we're gonna put it in this file called enable task history, and then we're gonna execute this on my schedule. We're gonna start it at midnight, and our repetition time is every one minute. And we're gonna run it, we're gonna run it, we're gonna run it, we're gonna run it. And that way, if someone goes in and disables it, every minute it's gonna kick it back on. Now again, I just told you in the slides that you wanna do GPO or some other management way to do it, but hey, brute force that sucker. I love it. That's what we do here. We brute force stuff. All right, so the rest of this is me setting up the objects and all that. Uh, by the way, all my code will be available on GitHub, so uh, don't, try to, don't try to memorize this. Let's see this one. All right, show the events in the event log. I have helpful notes to myself here. That way my presentation goes off without hitches. Where is my event viewer? Okay, here we go. I need to turn off the action pane. Maybe not. Maybe I can shrink it. I want this to be, there we go. All right, so here we are in the task scheduler operational. We can see that we've got these tasks and they've been dutifully doing their work. I'm gonna make this a little bigger. Sorry about in the back, it becomes the eye chart. I just couldn't get any bigger. But you can see task scheduler successfully finished. Here's a good instance of Microsoft Windows, Windows error, et cetera, et cetera, right? If I scroll over this way, where's my event IDs? You can start to see those event IDs that I was talking about. So here they are. Here's 100, it started. 200, the action. 201, it completed. And 102, it done. Thank you. Here's 107, task triggered on schedule. Let's see if I can find one that's like actually mine here. Maybe this one, let's see, nope, that's office. All right, I'm not gonna go fishing through here because there's already, just on my system, thousands of these entries in there, okay? Uh, I just wanted to show you the event viewer. All right, so let's run this code. Let's see what this does. So I showed you the MMC. I noticed I did a if not process MMC, then show it. That way if I didn't have it open, it opened it for me. And then I was supposed to press F5. Tried to help myself by telling myself what to do. And so the code that it just ran was, go get those operational tasks and give me 100 events. Ta-da, there they are. Just like I showed you and you can see the codes. That's cool, because now we can say, just show me the task triggered events for 107, right there, all right? So what I'm doing is I'm saying, give me a filter hash table. Here's my log name, here's everything else. Let's run it, boom. There's all the 107s, yes. I love it when my demos work. All right, so now let's do it again, but let's only do the ones that have enabled task history. Where's my button? There it is. <laughs> yeah, red text, red text, here's why. Turns out you can't filter on message if you're using filter hash table, even though ChatGPT says you can. Do not trust ChatGPT, all right? Here's what you can filter on, and again, this link will be in my code, click it. But message is not in there. So great, what do we do? Well, fine, we just pipe it into where object and then we filter it that way. So let's do that. What are we doing here with this code anyway? We're saying I want the task history and I want the first event. Notice the select object, first one, skip one. Why did I skip one? Well, it might be in the middle of running one and I don't have all of the tasks yet, so I wanna go to the second one that I know finished. By the way, I found that out uh, as I was trying to do my demos and going, where is my ending? Okay, there it is. Now I'm gonna take the GUID. So I'm, I've got my object, the first object. I'm gonna take the GUID from it. Why do I want the GUID? Because now I can take all the events and pipe those into where object where they match the GUID and see what my results are. Boom. So for this particular task, I now see that it started. It sort of, it sort of started, but then it started but then it really started, then it finished, and then it finished. <laughs> Again, I didn't write this. All right, so sweet, now I've got all that. We can return how long it took to do this job. 
How long did it take? So here's start of events, or start of task. Here's end of task. Notice I'm just filtering. Give me the 107, give me the 102, and then give me a time span object from that. And I can see that sucker took two seconds, milliseconds, whatever. Cool, huh? Why is that important? Do you know how long it takes your task to run in your enterprise? Any clues? Nope, I just gave you the golden key for that. You're welcome. No applause necessary. Seriously. All right, well, there's more. All right, let's take the results for each one of those events. Let's take the good for each one. We're gonna loop through these things. We're gonna get the start of task, the end of task, and the duration for every running of this thing. Why does this keep popping up? Go away. All right, and then I'm gonna output a custom object for task name, start name, and duration. And I'm gonna take those results and I'm gonna pipe it a format table. And then I'll say, what's the average time to run? And then I'm supposed to tell myself to return to the slides. Go. Oh, I need the window. Where's my window? There it is. So here's my task history, how long they took. And then here's my average time. At that point, it's math. What can you do with it? You figure it out. It's pretty cool. All right, back to this, let's see. That was event log. I gotta make sure, so it's analysis, then chart. All right, how are we doing on time? I have no idea. Ooh, I'm gonna have to talk fast. Hoo-hoo, if you thought I was talking fast before, brace yourselves. All right, I did the hey job, okay. It's the hey job, and it's three friends. We talked about the, uh, let me get back to presentation mode here. Trust no why, you know? These are the ones that things have gone poorly, right? So the ones I said, the 300s, let me go back. Let me do that right quick. I want to go back. Da, 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 da. So these are the ones that I said, hey, there's something wrong with your task. These are the ones that someone did something bad, right? That's why they're the ID10T events, right? Task registration deleted, task disabled, task registration updated. Maybe you have tasks that you don't want anyone messing with and you want to know when someone or something changed them. There you go. Those are the events you need to pay attention to. Oh shoot, see I did have something to tell me when to go to the demo. Eh, whatever. Analysis to avoid paralysis. Welcome to the rabbit hole. Oh, you thought we were in the rabbit hole already? Ha-ha, <laughs> no. Check all of your tasks. Build execution correlations and durations on your tasks. Load balance your tasks across multiple servers. Server here, server there. Alternating tasks from one to the other. How do you know whether you're doing that? You need to ensure that your tasks are properly handling issues, right? This is, what, this is all in the event viewer. That's why it's so important to have it turned on. And in this case, execution time limit is your friend. Which one though? Better follow the white rabbit, Neo. All right, don't look at don't look at that next slide. All right, back over here. Follow the white rabbit, Neo. Back at the top. Let's talk through what we're gonna look at. I'm gonna build a custom object from my task. I'm flattening this sucker out because trying to work your way through it hierarchically is kind of a pain. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, give me the ta scheduled tasks where the task pass is the root and it's not Microsoft Edge update. And because I'm using regex, if it has that anywhere in the text, it'll work. So I don't need the, the wild cards, okay? Then I build my object, PS custom object, and I'm flattening everything out. Do you see what I'm doing? So if it already, if it has child items, I said, no, I don't need that one because I don't, I don't need the full object. But I do need the ID, the argument, the execute, the working directory, the PS computer name. Okay, here's the rest of it. Did you catch all that? Yeah, let's just run it. All right, so once you have it flat, you can start exploring your object and say, all right, what data is in here and what do I care about? And now this, I took the task info flat and I piped it into select object and I said, here's the stuff I wanna see, all right? The order's a little weird, but I just popped it in there. And so I did out grid view, because out grid view, frankly, shows this a slightly better. 
apologize that it's small again, but here's the task. Here's Chad that's reasonable. It ends properly on time. Chad that's unreasonable. It runs for three days, right? But you can now see that. Here's my execution time limit. PT 4M, T stands for time, okay? H, T stands for time, M for minutes, H for hours. That's kind of how you translate this. This is your standard time uh, sequencing. So the settings execution time limit for this is PT4M. Okay? Now if I scroll this way, you can just kind of see, hey, there's a lot more stuff. Here's the trigger execution time limit. Here's the trigger's boundary. Here's trigger's random delay. Trigger repetition interval. So the triggers can repeat. You know? Sweet. You're like, yeah, that's a lot. What does that do? All right, how about we only return tasks that use the default time limit? Because I want to know which tasks I need to go look at. All right, let's run that. Task info flat. There they are. Let's make this bigger so you can see them in their glory. So Chad unreasonable is one of them. Daily tasks at midnight is one of them. Demo one. Yeah, there they are. That's cool. I thought I said there was more than one execution time limit. I did say there was more than one execution time limit. So you need to go look at those two. Actually, I already have it highlighted because I pressed F10. So here it is. This one has settings execution time limit and triggers execution time limit. See that? Let's run that one. Now the question you're asking yourself for, where, where's my, where's my first, first victim? The daily task at midnight. For this task, is it three days? Or is it 12 hours? And which column is this? I'll show you the columns. The trigger execution supersedes the settings execution. But you can only set settings execution when you're creating a task on the scheduler object using the PowerShell commandlets. Fun. OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to list the task and each individual trigger. Because look at this test 7. What is it doing? This one has multiple triggers, just like I do. Whatever. Sorry, so we're going we're gonna to create an object that says, oops, I need to show you the code right quick, because you guys will be impressed by this, where the trigger count is greater than one. So these are the ones that have more than one trigger to them, right? And so then I'm going to go for each two of these and do a custom object. Let's just look at it. Okay, another out grid view thing. Here it is. So both of these are for the same task, task, test seven, and they're pretty much similar, except one has a execution time limit and one doesn't. And this one's this, starts on this, and this one starts on this. Now, take a look at this carefully, if you can see it, and get your binoculars if you can't. When does this one start? When does this one start? Okay, what I'm pointing out is even though you interrogate the object that you got back, it still doesn't have all the data you need in order to know what the task is doing. And I put everything in here, all right? Now, that's a terrible thing to end with, right? Here's the problem. What kind of trigger is it? These are the triggers, let me minimize this right here. These are the triggers on the left that are available through the UI and through scheduled tasks. The ones on the right are the ones that are available through PowerShell. Cool. Did I already hit the return to slides part? Guess not. Let me hit that. Finish this out. All right, so, Stephen, do you have a solution for me? You've come to the right presentation. I would not leave my friends hanging like that. That's a terrible plan. Let's talk about getting fancy. Are we back to here? Are we back to here? Here we go. Because you want to see when your tasks run, how long they run. I think I already showed you this, but I'm going to go through the things now. The focus is on the time-based triggers. You need to pay attention to the time-based triggers because the other ones are nearly impossible to map, right? You can't map when your server's on idle. By the way, I discovered by default, when you create a task on a laptop, if you unplug it, they don't run because by default, they're set to not run unless they're on power. Guess whose demo almost got screwed up by that, right? On an event, 
How are you going to know when an event happens? Can you plan when an event happens? Now, I love that power. The power of being able to do a task based on when you see an event in an event log is great. However, you can't map that stuff. So, good luck. All right, so since PowerShell is like the C, let's see shells. You guys knew what you were getting into when you walked in the door. I have no sympathy for you. All right, this last one. All right, you thought the other ones were crazy? Look how many lines we're at. Look how many things I didn't do, all the different task trigger types. So what did I do? All right, let's do this. Since we can't get what we need from scheduled tasks, we have to become mutants and become XML men. Men being gender neutral in this situation. It's like X-Men, but there's more letters. That's what the ML stands for. XML men, see, you get it, you get it, I get it. All right, see so if audience reaction not match this or that, then continue demo. <laughs> Guess what, this always matches. <laughs> so whether you laughed at my last joke or you cried, we're rolling on. Task info, so we're gonna grab all the tasks in the root again, and then for each task and each task info, we're going to process that task. We're gonna export that task as XML into a file. Unless the file already exists, if the file already exists, we're just gonna rewrite all the contents using set content. otherwise we're gonna create a new file. It's just good patterns and practice to check whether the file exists and then properly handle it. Then things get nuts. I'm not going to explain what out task object, just know that it puts my output. I had so many of them, I wrote a function in order to do the output. Then we go into each one of these and we check to see whether the task is enabled. And if it is enabled, then we switch on the content and see whether it's a time trigger. If it is a time trigger, then we figure out whether the time trigger is enabled. If the time trigger is enabled, then we have to figure out where the start boundary is. <gasps> After that, I think I just hyperventilated. The start time must be before the end of the date to output. Because remember, there's a date output that ends. So you don't want to output the ones that are already ended. So we don't do those. Then we have one time with the infinite duration. Okay, I'm getting lightheaded now, so I'm gonna stop. Here's the rest of it. <laughs> uh, yes, and if you're counting, this one's 12 deep. 12. This is time trigger. There's also calendar trigger. <laughs> I cried when I started writing this one. Let's just run it. There's one wait debugger, I tell you, ha <laughs> go. There it goes. I got some right verbose, I got some right hosts. Okay, what did it do? What did that just do? Here's what it did. It output each task, when it started, and when it finished. Now, this isn't the actuals, this is the scheduled. And I picked a day, notice the date, I said, for this day, April 14th, I want all the tasks. So if I scroll through here, if there was a single task that only ran once, you only see it once. But there's Chad Reasonable, there's Chad Unreasonable, there's the daily task. Cool, huh? All right, sweet, so what do you do with that? What could you do with that? Wait debugger, invoke item, here we go. You can chart it. Again, I just sampled the data. So I grabbed the full data. Straight off of that, you could use import Excel. Would totally do this for you. I didn't, but you could do it here, right? I gave it a duration. Duration is end time minus start time. Easy, piece of cake. All right, so here's the first chart attempt. You guys, you guys reread that, didn't you? That's what the chuckling was. <laughs> here's first chart attempt. Yikes. Yikes. All right, but kind of gives me an idea of which ones are crazy. The ones that go to the top, those are the crazy ones. They're also the ones that have the three day duration. These are the ones that stepping through, they have a reasonable duration. This chart's not that great. Let's get closer. Ooh, closer. All right, so now we're looking at Chad Reasonable starting, how do I get rid of this quick analysis? Thank you very much. Chad Reasonable, here's my start time, here's my end time. Start time, end time, start time, end time. Sweet, now let's compress them so that Chad Reasonable is just one line and then I can get all my starts and stops and et cetera. Um, 
yuck. So I tried it, couldn't get it to work in Excel. I didn't know what I was doing. So I said, okay, fine, I give up. Just show me two sets of this stuff, okay? So I got, by the way, those scheduled tasks that I've been running, every once in a while you see the thing showing up. <laughs> I couldn't figure out how to hide that dumb window. Gosh, all right, so Chad Reasonable is real short. Chad Unreasonable, each one of these is three days long. So you can see where your overlaps are and you go, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's see what that looks like with sample data. Here's my sample data one, cool. Yeah, that's getting a lot closer. It's a little too much, so I shortened it down a little bit so it kind of almost fit on one page. So you can see all the tests and see where they overlap, see the ones, like the demo ones have overlap. So demo one may run a little long, that's fine, and then it'll end, and then the next one, because remember these just keep stacking up, the next one will eventually pick it back up. You may have a task that'll run usually very fast, but then after it runs very fast, it may run a long time later. That's okay, it's okay that they overlap. You're now getting a visual representation of what they're doing, okay? All right, now that I've wowed you with all of that, and I said getting fancy, where's my, no, 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 right here, that was getting fancy. See, this is why I wanted to just do whatever. All right, moving through that, I said all that, since PowerShell's like the C, let's see shells. It was such a good joke, I had to say it again. In conclusion, okay, pay attention to your tasks. You need to pay attention to your tasks because they, frankly, are doing a lot more than maybe you even be aware of in your enterprise or on your servers or on your workstations. They're doing stuff. You need to know what's happening, okay? Set up triggers for tasks that don't complete, okay? You want it to, you don't want it to run for three days especially on a task that you expect to finish in five minutes, right? That's just, it seems obvious, but you didn't know that it was three day default, right? Don't use the default durations. Set up restart intervals and counts. This is something I didn't even talk about, but in a task, I just had too much material. In a task, you can say, if you fail, here's how often I want you to retry and how quickly I want you to retry, okay? So you can say, I want you to try three more times, but I want you to wait 10 minutes before you try again. So it fails, it crashes, wait 10 minutes, try again. If it does those all the way to the end, then do something else. Analyze how long your task runs take on average and enforce the task history. But most importantly, be consistent. Whatever you decide to do, be consistent. And you knew it was coming. Now that you're an expert at making tasks do what you want them to do, when you want them to do it, get those tasks to work for you and have your leaders come and ask you how you are getting so much accomplished. And you'll tell them it's because you're a taskmaster. All right, I'm not responsible for any CLMs or RGEs, you're on your own. Stay in touch. I know I blasted through that. I have very little time for questions. Thank you so much for attending and I will accept whatever questions we have with whatever time we have left, two minutes, go. No, you can. All right, so the question is, I, I said that you can't build a task based on a trigger using an event. You can, what I was demonstrating is that if you're gonna build a chart, how would you ever know when that event is gonna occur? So that's what I was trying to drive toward is I was trying to get to my beautiful Excel chart at the end where you know when your actual anticipated chart time events go. Now, you could use this stuff in step six, on my demo six, to figure out when they're actually occurring and how long they're taking, and so then you'll get your historical view from the event log. Does that help? Now you can access, I showed you, you can access all the events, you can, so you can see them all through the command line. You can do everything here without doing any GUI that just the hardest part is doing the com objects or editing the XML directly in order to create a task that the, the register scheduled task commandlet doesn't do natively. That's the challenge. I know we're at time, but it, I'll try to squeeze in another question if you have any. You nope, you got a warning? Don't let people mess with the Microsoft tasks. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, let's, let's get that on the recording. Don't let people mess with the Microsoft tasks. Hey, what's the task run filter? One of them, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. RDP session to server, the moment you use the keyboard in modern Windows. So I can summarize that with 
don't mess with things you don't understand. All right, I have stickers. I have lots of stickers. Please come up. Thank you.